Hi, Eugene. Hi, Jackie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Not bad at all. How was how was waking up this morning for you? Um, it was good actually. Three for five a.m. I I woke up before the alarm, so that was nice. Um, then I walked out and read a bit, and now I'm here. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, that three forty five though is insane. God bless. <laughs> I go to bed really early as well. So oh, correct. It helps. Yeah. Okay. What yeah. time do you go to bed? Uh, usually I'm in bed by eight thirty, eight forty. This is interesting because that means it's very unlikely that you watch the things you make. Not on TV, no. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of watching the things you make, tell us yes. a little bit about what you what you do. Yeah. So my name is Eugene Bogum. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. Mm. I run two major businesses. So I have a club in the CBD called Number Seven. But my main work is television. I run a company called Young Rich TV. It was called that primarily, also known as documentary and reality TV. Um, and we produced TV shows uh, all the way back from our first TV show premiered in 2013, mm. uh, Young Rich, and we've done a bunch of others since Young Rich, Get in the Kitchen, uh, Story Rango, A Perfect Wedding, Foods of Kenya, Bing Bahati, uh, the, South, the reality show with South Soul called Soul Family. Uh, we have a show called This Love with Who and Nameless, and mm. quite a few others in the pipeline as well. That's in, that's incredible. Yeah. Um, the the docu reality space it's it, it feels very much like you've done a lot of work to expand it. Yes. Um, and maybe you could tell us a little bit about what it was like getting into mm. that space. Yeah. Mm. So initially, I had an interest in documentaries, um, and this is because when. Um, I went to, to, to USIU to study TV production, but then in, in all the universities in Kenya, TV production here isn't really what you might think. It's not production of this kind. It's it's more newsy. Mm. So they mean news TV production. Oh, wow. So yeah. when they say they're teaching TV production, they mean producing news. Producing for TV, which is not necessarily shows. Correct. Um, so, But I got there and there was this great lecturer called Mr. Mutua who just allowed me to do my own thing. So while I was in university, I started producing documentaries. Of, I, made, I think I made almost half a dozen, easily a dozen documentaries when I was in school. Like student documentaries? Student documentaries. Are they available somewhere? Did you throw can, them on YouTube? In a I have corner? some, yeah. I actually saw one recently. This, I made one about the cats at the cafeteria. What? <laughs> yeah. This, <laughs> <laughs> then I made another one about um, what your shoe, do your shoes define your personality? Oh, wow. And then I had that narrated with music. So that was interesting. Of course, none of, I didn't own any of the music. Mm. It's, um, so, I, you know, while, while watching a bunch of that stuff or, or rather when making a bunch of that stuff, mm. or by the way, people loved to be you know how they have group work? Yes. Uh, everybody loved my group because the rule was one, you join and walk away. Don't interfere with my production. Wow. Um, so people would just join your group yeah, and then and you're doing all the work. Wait for their A's, yeah. Wow, correct. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it paid out. <laughs> uh, some famous people, actually. I will not mention them here. Some Is famous it? people. <laughs> okay. Um, so we, I, I did a bunch of, docu of documentaries while I, was, while I was still in school. Mm. And I watched a documentary called Searching for Sugar Man by uh, a Swedish filmmaker called Malik Benjalul. Mm -hmm. uh, he did this documentary about a musician called Rodriguez um, who was supposed to be dead, but then was big in essay. It's very, very intriguing stuff if you can find it. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember watching that and thinking, that's what I want to do. Wow. Um, so then... I what, what about that documentary kind of reached into your chest in that incredible way? Um, it's... So previously, when I was doing all these documentaries, I always used to feel like I was almost not producing film. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, documentaries are, especially the type I do, it's it's people's stories. It's it's nothing more. We don't do special effects. We don't we don't blow up cars, which would be really cool if we could. Wow. <laughs> but in a documentary, though. Yeah, in a documentary, it's just the stories of people. Mm. Um, at least the type of documentaries that Searching for Sugarman is. And just how he took... It's just sit down interviews and be role and mm. the way he was able to weave together a story and an emotion mm. and music a lot of music also played a big part in this in this in this documentary mm -hmm. i was just like that is what i want to do okay and it was within reach of because i had the equipment there in school and whatnot mm -hmm. um so then after i watched searching for sugarman um i was a, i was a teacher i was doing a bunch of things while i was in university because i was a part-time student um so then i got um I got the concept for uh, the first show, Young Rich, yeah, uh, which was documentary based, and, and, this, and this was you like kind of starting from absolute scratch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you are you are alone with this kind of concept for Young Rich. Yes, borrowed equipment, uh, still a student at the time, um, and I remember at the time when we I started pitching it to stations because I pitched it quite a bit in the year 2012 into 2013. Uh, there was no, at least none that I can remember, there was no programmed documentary on, on Kenyan TV. Mm. There was the news supplements, you know? Yes. Uh, the ones that like, were, like, the, like news features. Yes, mm. there were news features. 
Um, which are usually kind of special yes. interest stories. Then there was Makers of a Nation. Correct. Makers of a Nation, but that had, uh, was a bit of a different style. Actually, mm-hmm. other than make, Makers, yeah, there was Makers of a Nation, which was one of my favorite things to watch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so then when I went pitching around uh, Young Rich, so first of all, it seems too simplistic for most people. It's like, so what? It's going to be interviews of, of young rich people. First of all, how many young rich people are there even in wow. this country? Wow. Um, so, but then interestingly, um, there's a, there was a shift in 2013 mm-hmm. um, because that's when K24 uh, did the thing and they poached all the top media guys. That it, was a moment. Yeah, it was a that political was a thing happening. In <laughs> Kenyan media. Yeah, because, because I, remember, like, I remember the, yeah. I, remember, I remember social media was wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. The, and they doubled salaries. It was a crazy time. And so one of the, one of the people, some of the people who had been poached to come in and sort of revamp the station yeah. because I had pitched to so many, I sort of got um, an, an, an in there. Um, so then I pitched the show and K24 were young enough to to try something new, mm, mm. and of course, uh, young rich had a bit of a of a, of a of a shock value because of the net worth thing, mm. um, and and it, it was also just um, very new content for Kenyan TV at the time. Yeah. subject matter wise, not production wise. Yes. Um, so then also I used music quite a bit in the narration, just like I had seen on Touching for Sugar and all these other things, um, and we had a, quite a few interesting personalities on there. Um, so I, I feel like that really set us off well. Um, it got us quite a bit of media, international media attention as well. That's amazing. Uh, because we had, uh, like, I remember the Sydney Morning Herald Center crew. Wow. To, to first of all hear about these young rich Africans, uh, and then secondly, it's a, it's a how old doing it. Mm. <laughs> so you know that that was interesting. So I would say it was a really good show to start because it gave us all this uh, interesting attention. Of course, as you know, we also ran into some headwinds there mm-hmm. um, because it was a, we were a small company. We didn't really have a research team or anything. So mm. a, a few con men snuck through. Oh my! We did uh, ninety episodes of that show, mm-hmm. and maybe four or five were questionable people, which is not too bad a percentage, but also not too good. I mean, it's not it's not a terrible era. Era margin. Yeah, but it it was um, especially one, you know, Heshan de Silva. We had that case there mm. that was quite uh, disheartening. Uh, but all in all, so you know, that's the first documentary show we do, and uh, then we moved to get in the kitchen, which is more cooking competition. Right. Uh, poking fun at Pacheki. You know how African men don't cook, so mm. you, uh, these men are given a challenge, and, and that was fun. Mm-hmm. And then we went to uh, Story Angu. Went back to I love profile TV shows, so Story Angu is one that you we, just kind of keep gravitating back towards them. Yeah. Actually, yeah. actually now, like, we have, like, four in the pipeline. I think my, <laughs> my, my, my crew hates me. Like, how many people can we possibly profile? And I mean, I'm like, fi- <laughs> there's six billion people in the world. <laughs> I'm constantly finding new classifications. How about now we profile um, people this height? You know, I don't know. It's so like friendly. Mm. So I, I love profiles because there's so much strength to... There's a there's a poetry to people's stories. That's very true. Um, which which I'm, I'm usually very fascinated by, and everybody has a story. If you, if you can if you can find a way to tell it well. Mm. So anyway, so yeah, story Angu, uh, a profile uh, show which um, is on Maisha Magic, and we, we've had some great personalities there. Uh, you know, we had Ida Odinga for the first time give like a proper proper documentary about her life and how difficult it was when when Raila was in detention and mm. all this stuff. And, and the, I think I think there's a thing that um you've been able to carry it through from then, mm. which is being able to tell people stories with a lot of grace. Yes. Um, a lot of times when they are found by these news yes. types of people, yes. the news people are looking for an mm. angle, they're looking mm. for a scandal, mm. but you you're coming yeah. with like your yeah. hands, yeah. you know, and you're like, I can't receive your story. Yes. Actually, one of the things we do for a lot of those profile shows is we don't add a third voice. We mm. don't add a voice. Mm. We let your words narrate it. Of course, we edit, uh, but we do. We, we try to not shape anything for you. Um, and so we've done, like, Suryangu has had great personalities. The last season, we did Kalonzo Musioka. Mm. Um, we did Martha Karua. Uh, we did uh, Rachel Shebesh. Mm. Uh, previously, we've done Esther Pasiris. We've done... Keep chugging. Um, we've done like we've 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 just we've done almost 50, 60 people. These are great people. Jeff Quinangi, that was a fantastic one. Because mm. uh, also he's the one who's always profiling people. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's a great storyteller. Mm. So so we had a, a beautiful episode there. Um so it's it's just so that did well. And then so we I think we we have a mixture of both uh, reality and documentary, and now we have the formats that are actually intentionally combined. Mm, uh, like the kind of hybrid format. Yes, yes. So that's Soul Family, mm. uh with 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 with, with Saudi Soul. We have a season we've just done with with Wahoo and Nameless, which is called This Love. We had a great episode there. Uh, when they recounted the story of Isa, uh, and again nobody had done it in in that sense, mm. which is interesting because you you always we overlook because um, 
we have, we overlook that just simple element of just asking the people involved tell us i mean i think mm. i think maybe for isa there was also the fact that there was such deep grief around mm. losing him mm. and because he was lost so young yeah um and 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 as kenyans we're terrible with grief yeah. in general yeah. we we don't talk about um some of these things mm. a lot of times you just have to swallow all yes. of yes all of the emotions mm. and so maybe you found them at a place where they were ready yeah you know true no but i don't think also just anybody had asked them true. in that way it's true yeah it's true uh because they were will they had a lot to say mm. uh, i guess what you said earlier about we rely a lot well, most of our people's stories are left to the news yeah and you know the news of course is limited to two minutes yeah. so they just want the quick punchline and out they do um so i guess for for I read somewhere once that the biggest gift you can give anybody is to listen to them, mm. and maybe that's what our shows do to some degree. That's really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I think um, maybe we can rewind a little bit um, mm. to this moment where you are pitching to everybody, and I think we're at a place where um, pitches are becoming very much a, a part of business life. Mm. Um, and could you tell us about like soldiering through that disappointment of the pitches that didn't work because mm. there were many. Yeah, yeah. They still are. Yeah, <laughs> they still are. I think. Uh, I have I have a folder on my computer called the graveyard, which I, we are, I've been now informed to change to the bank. Um, <laughs> but it's 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 a collection of all my things that didn't uh, didn't go out. Mm. Uh, most of them I pitched because uh, you know, it's all these. Uh, it's, I think for every one of the TV shows that the company puts out, there's usually maybe ten or more that didn't didn't see it. Sometimes because the idea was not as good as you thought. Sometimes because the timing was not right. Um, but pitching is a very very interesting thing because. It's very, it's very unnerving. It's you don't want to go to be told you're, you're it's not it. Yeah. Um, and at the beginning, of course, the biggest thing to um, that I just sort of hoped for was to not give up. Mm. But I will not sit here and lie to you that I was that soldiering guy. I actually almost got a job <laughs> mm. uh, just before because everybody was saying no. So just before Young Rich came, I was actually just about to get a job at the Nation as a writer, mm. uh, and of course my life would have been very different. I don't think I'd have been sitting here with you. Mm. <laughs> That's you're, uh, you're right. It would have been a very different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It would been a very, very different life. Mm. Um, and to this day, uh, pitching is still something that gives me jitters. Mm. Um, uh, but it's, I wouldn't say it's, it's it's really the pitching itself anymore. It's just the idea, the the idea, the 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 fear that it it might not. It may not work. It might not work. Mm. Um, so, but what do I do now? I think now I almost like sort of tick the nose as a closer to a yes. So I'm like, okay, maybe I've done I've done six nose. Maybe the seventh one is where I need to be going at. Uh, I've, I've got I've definitely gotten better at at dealing with uh, with the jitters from that. Um, I, pitching to to the broadcasters and that uh, I, I, the pitching probably process isn't really the problem anymore. It's mm. more the onboarding because sometimes you'll pitch and it's a yes, but then a point between something happens. No, it's the logistics. The logistics, contracting, mm. um, you don't agree on pricing, uh, you know all those there are all those elements in between. But it's always it's always very um, it requires that at, at uh, the grain a strong skin to know that the no's don't necessarily mean anything. Uh, not, not not that they don't mean anything, but they, they're not they're not the end. Or they're not a judgment on what you made. Yes, mm. and a lot of times, sometimes your product is solid. Your the time is either not right or you're pitching to the wrong person. I'll give you an example. Um, we have a show called Foods of Kenya that I conceptualized in 2014. Um, and Foods of Kenya is, you know, it documents traditional Kenyan food. And we went pitching it to to the stations as we always do, and nobody thought it was anything. Again, like it was there telling us about traditions and stuff. So it went to the graveyard. <laughs> Um, then five years later, 2019. Five years. Yeah. The other day someone asked me how long it takes my shows to get from construction TV. And I said, it's anything from eight months to five years. Wow. <laughs> so five years later, we, in quick succession, a bunch of politicians died from cancer. Do you remember that period? Yes. And then it was a national issue. Yes. Um, a lot of prominent people died in a very short period from mm. cancer, 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 cancer. And the president mm. went on air on TV and said, you know, it's time we reevaluate our our diets, our diets and mm. go back to traditional food. Mm -hmm. And then and there this you are with... went back. Mm. Um, and then there was interest now and we were able to sell the show to KTN mm. and it's 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 doing very well there. Uh, it's still on air every Saturday at 7.30 and we've transversed every corner of the country to covering traditional food. So it's, it's very interesting in that sense. So it wasn't that the idea was wrong in any way. No. It was just maybe the timing wasn't right. Mm. Um, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the context for presenting mm, it. Um, mm. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I think maybe we can go back to before we talk about uh, the real reason we're having this conversation yes. is um, understanding how money moves in mm, your business, yes. how you get money to kind yes. of expand and um, do wonderful things with your ideas. Mm. But you said something really interesting earlier about uh, mistakes, mm. and I and I think I think I think I think maybe go a little bit more into that with mm. regard to especially because you tell people stories, yeah. and because you come from a place that's not. Um, interested in an angle, mm. but sometimes it's that your subject who had mm. come with an angle mm. that they want to use you to yes. present themselves in a sort in a kind of way. Yes. So how do you find a balance between kind of what you want to do mm. and what they need to get done? Yeah. Um, so that then you're complete. You're you're not necessarily completely free of agendas, mm. but mm. you don't get yourself into any caught up in them. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the mistakes. It's it's very interesting. Like how do you manage the guests to ensure that their agendas don't? Um, I would say also uh, it it depends. It varies with nature mm. of content. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, for instance, on 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 Young Rich, because there was um, almost the way we were running the show, there was, it it was a PR. Uh, it, it it was a very big PR minefield for uh, uh, is minefield the word no PR opportunity mm. for their for their businesses, um, and so I think that's where um, the need to lie sort of came in to some degree. Um, and at the time, we could have sorted this out by just be doing better research. And uh, to be fair to the team and 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 the team and the company is, we did uh, we did block some. Like there was a guy who made us go all the way to Kitale, and there was no factory. Wow. They did think we'd go because before we weren't going, um, then we went and there was no factory. So of course we can't do the whole episode. And oh wow! Was, so he was talking about a factory, and then we had done the interview in Nairobi, like we'd always done, and people just send you pictures and you use them as B-roll. Because um, you know, so media is limited financially. Yes. So you sometimes don't have money to go. And check also, to everything. be fair, even with regard to research, um, not all of the information that you're looking for is online. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, so we blocked some of those, but of course, some got through. Um, on the now that we we know better, we we the editing table is usually a big one for for mm-hmm. us. There's stories that I I can't talk about here that we've had to, to shut down entirely because they went. Phew, and you're just like there is no way to to put this out while not offending the subject, mm. but while also not messing it up, messing up the story or the public people involved, mm. um, especially as politicians. You know you have to be careful, um, uh, and especially around the last election, we uh, there was a lot of decisions that were made. And you know the problem with that is we are the ones who lose money, yeah, because the broadcaster will not pay for no for, for that for, piece. for like a canned episode, yeah. Mm. Uh, but it doesn't happen as much anymore because I th- uh, we do better research. Um, our questions are more targeted. Um, we are very brutal on the editing table, um, and I think also just um, as we've gone along, people have started to respect our work, so mm. they they know what to come mm. and 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 not do or do, uh, and and the fact that we also we, we we try and create a safe space with the questions. From very onset, our agenda is 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 clean. And if you've seen our other material, you know that we we are trying to tell a good story. Mm-hmm. We are not really trying to dig or 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 pit people against others. Like you're not interested in like the gossip or the tension no, in yeah, that sense. Yeah. And also, we are not a news production company, no. so we are not trying to break any any news. Um, so it's it's gotten easier. It's gotten easier. But mistakes we've we've made a lot of mistakes along the way. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I think I think I think your openness with regards to the mistakes you've made and the learning you've done mm. um, must have been a very crucial element in being able to start inviting um, outside financing. Because yes. pretty much this whole time you are financing it from your pocket, mm. from your network, yes. and kind of growing bigger within that mm. frame. But when mm. did you realize that for this I'm going to need outside financing? So in around 2019, um, I still I was still running the business. I had I had some shareholders that I started out with, but nothing. Um, um, uh, imagine you know, a very uh, minimal shareholding, mm. um, and these are not friends who are even involved in the business at all. Um, so really, I, I was alone. But as I uh, in 2019, um, before the pandemic happened, we, we we had spent a bit of time exploring other markets. So we went to to the states. I spent a few weeks there, talking to a bunch of people. We met some partners from London. Um, so it seemed like everything was going on very well. Um, but then around the same time, I had also started to speak to one of my mentors um, who, who, who was invested in a few businesses uh, and is an active investor. And it was for the first time that I understood what an investor does. Okay, so they come in with these systems, if, at least if you do it the proper way. Uh, you put together a board, uh, you now have to put um, 
checks and controls on almost everything. You're putting manuals for almost all departments. It's like, uh, I don't know. I've, I've, I've been pretty free here. <laughs> I don't know if I want to answer to that level. Mm. But the more I, I spoke to him about it, the more I understood that that's what you need to unlock uh, uh, money uh, for starters. And you need those systems to, um, to, 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 to build a sustainable business. And, and the analogy that I came up with was, uh, you know, going through the process of getting an investor and, 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 uh, and putting together a board is, is like deepening the, the roots of a tree. Uh, that way you can grow Taller. And it's a really beautiful analogy. Yeah, yeah, you can grow taller, and in case of any winds, you have a higher chance of survival. Oh, and the wind came, as you know. Wow. <laughs> COVID. Wait, first, 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 first wait, before we get into the COVID wind. Yeah. Um, can you tell us about the process of, um, I mean, it's, it's almost like a cliche these days, mm. becoming investor ready. Mm. But then like now you are, you, are, you are now realizing, I have to go and do all of this yeah. kind of internal spring cleaning, mm. Mm. Uh, revamping, renovations. What was that process like for you and for your team? I don't think we, we ever got investor ready, to be honest. Mm. Uh, our investor was kind enough to, to do that process with us. Oh, wow. Um, so we, we, of course, went through the whole due diligence process, um, taxation. Um, no, there's three, taxation, operational, and, uh, and financial. Um, and, you know, it happened at the, we were doing this whole thing at the height of COVID. Um, so, you know, a lot of uncertainty all around. Um, uh, but also, I guess it also gave both I and, and the investor enough time to, to work on the business. So we never really became investor ready. We worked together and we're actually still doing quite a bit of that because it's been over a year now since we started this engagement. Um, and it was... I think the most brutal thing I've ever done in my life. Wow. Um, to have your baby torn apart and told, uh, you know, it's sick here, it's sick here. You don't even have a leg at all on that's, the side. That, <laughs> that, that analogy is vicious. <laughs> it is vicious. It is vicious. Oh, uh, man. I, it, was, it was a very, very difficult thing to do. Mm. Um, and, you know, your part of due diligence is you go back on record, like, from the beginning. <laughs> And you're like, guys, guys, I, was, I didn't even know that piece of information then. And then what you realize is how little you know about what you're doing uh, business-wise. And of course, being a small business, you we were very, very unstructured uh, in, in ways we thought we were, but were not. Um, so I would say those months were, actually still are, uh, because we did eventually then set up and we took in the money um, and we... Um, we've put together a board, so that works very well. But I would say the spring cleaning is still happening. And mm. so we, we never really got investor ready. We got an investor who was willing to ready with us. Mm. Yeah, okay. which, was, which was a great, great advantage. Okay. Yeah. Um, that sounds really, that, that sounds like it was, like even, even as you say, it was a brutal process, it mm. was also quite kind. Mm. It was very kind. Mm. Um, we... So, you know, first of all, I, the, it helped that the investor was already a friend and was mentoring me. Um, but even from the very onset, uh, I, I came out very clean. And said, so, you know, first of all, I've seen these questions. I don't know if I have half of this stuff. Um, so there's two ways. We wait until I'm ready or we, we sort of do it together. We start the process and then yeah. see where it goes. Yeah. And he was, you know, we had many, many meetings to, to unlock stuff. Because, of course, you have his team and you have to get yours. Um, and, you know, before you get to evaluation and, and, and the terms and what percentages you're talking about. Um, it, was, it was brutal but very kind. Uh, but the, I don't think... That, the kindness was great, but it does not take away at all from no, the brutality. No, <laughs> And I would say, I think to any entrepreneur, it's, it's a thing once you do, you're never, you'll never, you're, you're, your business is never the same again, whether you get the money or not. Mm. Your business is just never the same again. Uh, because I think they're just, just purely because of how business is set up or how we do our things. People are very secretive and you have your stuff closed up and it seems from the outside like it's working. Yes. Um, which is how you get along. Actually, even a lot of big companies, that's, you'll find that's, that's, that's the case. Yes. You have, uh, you know how like at our homes, when you have a game, you clean up where they're coming to sit, but you still have your... And then you even have the dishes for them. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, but then this is like, actually, this is such an interesting analogy because <laughs> this is like having those who are getting who want to yeah, see I your kitchen. They want to see... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, they want to see everything. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And sometimes you haven't cleaned the tank in a long oh time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a very, especially if it's done properly, it's a very brutal process, but it's... Um, Without it, you, 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 um, especially because of I young, the way we, young businesses start is it's the entrepreneur who's just running. Yes. Uh, and then just making do with what you have. Like, yes. I mean, you, you actually, if, especially in a country like ours, that's the only way you survive if you're just running. Um, so I feel like 
that process is what makes you stop and go like, hey, 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 you know, there's there's a lot that and needs I, to be done. And I mean, I think I think it's important to say that there's a lot of there's a lot of ego in that process mm. of running because it yeah. is you. Yeah, and you're winning, running. of course, and you're yes. winning. <laughs> yes, you are. You, there, are, there are demons you are slaying. Yeah. There's yeah. all of the things that you're yeah. doing. Yeah. But then now somebody else comes in to tell you, actually, this race is the wrong one. Yeah. Like so, like what does that do for? For your spirit, because it, it it cannot, and and I guess that's pro, that's part of the brutality you're talking about. Yeah. Like, how I'll, how do you how do you heal from that? Because yeah. it's it's not easy. After well, we had our, our first board meeting and it lasted from nine to four p.m. Oh wow! And it had to be put to an end because there was just, and it's basically this great because how you, the board works is you put together um, a collection of people you consider very good at what they do and who you think will add value to your business, and they basically you answer to them as a CEO. Um, and you have to see them every quarter and uh, first of all present your plans then you're judged on those plans and you're called out on a lot of stuff that you think is uh, I don't know someone who said you're supposed to be a genius you're not geniusing <laughs> um, it's, so you're basically told you know your, your plans are not that great because you haven't considered this you're not considered that it's, it's, and it's very kind and very mm. professional mm. but after that first body meeting to be honest with you I think I just went home in the fetal position for a while and I had to go away because it's just uh, that whole process is not is not kind on your ego. No. But once you remember, you actually your ego is just that. It's your ego, and uh, if what you're being told is the reality, it's the reality. Um, so once we got that, I I personally got very quickly into the business of trying to um, actually implement what I'm being uh, guided towards. But it's very very humbling. Uh, it's it's a very very humbling process. It does sound like it's humbling. Yeah. Um, let's talk. I sound about... I sound much humble now. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you if you watch some of my previous interviews, <laughs> you are a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> these days it's you know God first. <laughs> uh, I think I think I think an interesting thing to to discuss with regard to um with regard to an investor and, and you've talked about trust mm. significantly. Mm. You've talked about um, these are people who are good at what they do. They're professional, they're kind. Yeah. Um, but how do, you, how do you grow in trusting uh, somebody who's coming into your business in this way? Mm. Yeah. So I think for, for, for me, the first Especially thing, because as you say, this is your baby. Yes. So it's like you're giving somebody else your baby mm. to hold and you're like, you don't want this mm. person to drop, mm. you know. Yeah, with the, with the trust element, I think for the, the uh, so there's trans, trust, of course, works two ways. There's the inter- how do you ensure the investor trusts the, the entrepreneur? And yeah. Then, of course, and in the fear of the investor is not necessarily the same as, as the entrepreneur. The mm. entrepreneur, you're, you're afraid of losing control. Mm. You're afraid of losing your baby. Mm. The investor is like, they, they want to ensure this baby is well fed and taken care of so that they don't lose their money. Mm. Um, so in, the, in that sense, at least for us, is we, we try to be as uh, wide open as possible. We, we over communicate, if anything. Um, and then it helps that my investor is actually pretty involved in the business as well, especially in the pre- in these early ages, as we agreed, in the early early stages. Uh, but then, also on on my part, um, I found that I had a lot of fears going in. Um, but then, the, if you do the legal bits right, um, which 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 that process was very very tiresome. You know, there are meetings that ended in deadlocks. This is, you have to go through hundreds of pages of documents just. Um, outlining possible outcomes in possible situations that you had never even thought of. <laughs> uh, you're ensuring everything. You are. Um, so I feel like that's the legal part. If you get that, if if you if you don't skim through that, it it, it gives you a bit of peace of mind. Mm. And then also just uh, going in with good faith uh, that you're saying you're not going to screw the person over. You are not. Going, and they're not going to screw you over. And you hope. Mm. <laughs> uh, but I do not. I feel like I have good faith all around. We've put the systems, but I have good faith all around. Um, uh, you hope that you're not going to, 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 to screw each other over, but above all that the business is not going to fail. And mm. so the good faith there is everybody's doing the ultimate best. And then of course you also put measures in place of what happens in terms in, in the situations of conflict. Uh, but I've, I, I can say so far for, for me, it's been a good run because uh, both my board and, and the investor as well are also people who've mentored me and who I look forward to mentioning. So there's that, um, that element of care. Mm. That's a, that's a really that's not a common thing, especially in this context mm. of, um, of 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 capital investment yeah. and with with specificity towards equity, mm. which is the kind of investment that mm. you got. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, how has how how did the equity conversations go for you? Um, so equity is also is always a, a complicated thing because you always think you have more is what you have is worth way more than uh, what the other party thinks. Um, 
But you know, for me, it was important to maintain um, majority stake, so as much of that as possible. Um, and also, I think for my investor from the very onset, he was also very clear that he wanted me to have majority ownership, so that I'd, he wanted the ownership to remain um, inherently mine. Um, because so, that means then also if the thing fails, it's you. Yeah, mm. uh, primarily. Mm. <laughs> no, I think regardless of how much percentage you take, because you, I'm the key man here. Yeah. Uh, and even just how, how our business is set up, it's very dependent on... Actually, any young business, I think, is very, very dependent on, on the entrepreneur. That's true. Um, so the the uh, the shareholding com- conversation, of course, was complicated because you're... You're reduced to this figure, mm. uh, and you're supposed to work from there. And you're saying, uh, to begin with, that figure is not even. So I find that sometimes, even now, we'll be in conversation, and then the, the you know how much I paid for this, and then the figure, blah, blah, blah. but yeah, yeah, it, it was very discounted. <laughs> um, and then something interesting as well. To be discussing the value of your business in a pandemic is not the best thing in the no, world. No, and that's actually when you were having your equity conversations. Mm, that is because at this point, uh, actually, still even now, contracts mm, are being cancelled left, yeah, right, and centre. Yeah. yeah. Um, you're not at your best. You're, you're basically saying to this guy the promise of, you know, I, I had some magic going on before all of this. Um, and, you know, you're, uh, you know, businesses are going through a lot of, of, of problems right now. Mm. Uh, there's uncertainty. The lockdowns really affected some of our programming. Um, actually, the lockdowns we had, the, the lockdown we had this year was, was worse for us than the one last year. Um, so, you know, it to be, uh, of course there's discounts that happen because of that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, but it, those are interesting challenges to have. Um, but I think also for us, we were both very clear, both parties were very clear that we, we cared more about what the company represented than the actual figures we're talking about now. So we didn't spend too much time fighting over that, which was, which was great. Okay. Yeah. When you say you didn't spend too much time, um, there was time spent. <laughs> <laughs> like how 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 much time do you think like it took? And 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 like was there a moment where you were like, actually, do you know I don't have to do this? Do you know I can just go home? Yeah, there are many instances. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, there are many instances where my ego will even just come back and go like, you know, I've actually been doing okay. <laughs> well, these people coming here to tell me that my business is is not doing this and this right. Mm. Well, you call our P seven years ago. You know, it's yes. <laughs> Um, there are many instances of of of, of, of that nature. So the, to, to, you asked two questions. The whole process for me started, um, I'll say, July of last year, and we only closed when maybe March, no, later even. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so maybe eight nine months of just um, due diligence and the back and forth. And yeah, um, uh, and the due diligence, of course, is that's the most brutal part because you have all these lawyers and bankers and 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 stuff haggling over different things. Um, and then there's also all the, you, you usually, usually very quickly realize how much you don't have in the documentation and stuff. Uh, so that took about eight months. But then you know there's also so there's a pre qualification, there's the pre requirements, and then there's the post requirements, which then continue even after you've closed. Mm. And we are still going through a lot of the post requirements, a lot of the cleanup, the, the spring cleaning, as you called it, uh, getting compliant with all bodies involved. Um, and just also the process of putting systems together that will now build this baby that you want to build that's a, a much bigger, um, better dressed baby, uh, better, op- healthier too. Wow. <laughs> so then, you know, you. Um, you have to put in all these measures into place. Mm. Um, departments have to be proper. HR comes in now. Um, you're putting together, you have a finance manager. You have like a lot of the stuff that smaller businesses will not have. Yeah. You're creating manuals for almost everything. You're becoming fully compliant with, with, uh, with the government and all bodies. It's, it's, it's really, it's, it's a lot of, lot of work that I think probably takes, from my, from my estimation, I'll still be at this for another year, year and a half uh, until we are, we're at a place where we can say, uh, we, we, are, we are where we should be. So you're, the thing that you're actually saying is that the the, the process of the process of receiving money is a costly one in oh, and of itself. Oh, it's it's brutal. Mm. Um, you know, the, nothing could have prepared me for the layers of of of, of governance that I'm I'm just now dealing with. Because uh, you know, before it was, you wake up in the morning, your idea is yours, you run. Um, now you have to, uh, you know, you answer to a board, first of all, so there's that. But there's also all these rules you've put into place about what can happen and what cannot happen, and you have to follow by that. And, you know, and as much as it's difficult, you actually do realize it's for everybody's good. Uh, you're more disciplined. You can, and of course, once once you started those things out, you can access much bigger businesses than you were able to access before. Uh, you can clean up your credit, so you're able to do that better. Um, it's, it's just, it's it's very grueling and, and very tiring. And, and you, you think the money is, 
uh, you 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 always wrongfully when you're talking about those questions, you only think about the money. Mm. You don't think about what's required. Mm. Um, but I I, I I think I can honestly say, first of all, the value that has been added in my in my business, and also what what we can unlock is worth the work. I think um I think I think an, an interesting thing that we can that we can delve into now are. Now, what, what, what are the problems that came with the money, right? Mm. So, because we talked about the, problem, the problems in preparing to receive mm. the money. Um, but then what are, the, what are the new problems that you're facing? And maybe not calling them problems. Yeah. They're probably challenges mm. because mm. they're also challenges of success, you know? Yeah. So, you went, here is an investor. You told them you need this amount of money. Like, with the eight month back and forth during a pandemic, mm. now you've gotten the money. Mm. So, what are the challenges that maybe you had not foreseen? Um, coming yeah. into that process, um, it's the, so we we, the, we the only major challenge we are facing for us is just trying to, you know, when you when you take in money, of course, one of the things you have to do is scale, mm. uh, because you have to make the money come back. That's how business works. Um, so then, trying to scale in a pandemic is, you know, well, our country is still going through. Well, the world, not our country, is still going through what it's going through. It's diff, some of your plans, uh, you know, the world sort of just laughs at them. It's like poof, come down. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd say that's the biggest challenge. But the other thing that's not really a challenge, but it's something I'm personally struggling with, is, of course, you're challenged to change. Um, one of my board members sent me uh, an article from the Harvard Business Review, and it was something along the lines of um, the mental process of destroying what you've built so you can build a better thing. Um <laughs> So I was just reading going through that, it. As, that even sounds like those articles. You know when people send you that article, yeah. you just put it away fast. Yeah. Before you even, <laughs> you're just like, you're not ready for this today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was reading that article. I was just, it, it summarized what we were talking about so well. And, you know, it's it had given examples of other businesses that had to pivot, especially during moments of crisis. Mm. Um, and it's that, again, the idea of, of destroying what you have built to build a new one. And so what this means for us is, you know, our business model is being questioned left, right, and center. Um, and I would say that's not necessarily a challenge, but it's a very tasking thing. So first of all, you've been told your baby is all this. Now that, now that you're here, you're being told we are building a new one. Throw this one away. So you're sitting there and you're pretty much um, starting afresh, really, uh, because you're rethinking everything. Um, um, and that, that has been quite, quite challenging. I can say it's... Um, both personally and professionally, but it's such an important requirement, uh, or rather, an important step of growth um, that doesn't happen. Actually, I do not see. I, I, I cannot foresee any other thing in my life that would have happened were not, were not for the investment that caused this change. Mm. Um, so it's 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 a challenge, but not a challenge. If that answers you, yeah, yeah, it really does. Mm. Um, when. Now that now that you're on this side of that process, um, even though you've said it's it's very much a spectrum and you're not really over it, yeah. it's just kind of still mm. going through it mm. because definitely then um, conflicts will arise and they will still yeah. continue to yeah. arise. So how do you go about solving them? Mm. Uh, because I think one of the things that a lot of business people fear is this idea that you will have a fight, the entire thing will go Collapse. to the dogs, yeah. and then now you won't even have what you had at the at beginning. The beginning. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a um, conflict. I, I, so first of all, so we have the the board and how that's constituted is everybody has their nominees, and you have a neutral one in case of uh, of a deadlock. So then that's a pretty decent um, guarantee. Uh, then of course you have you have all this uh, where the the legal elements of of taking in money are the worst because they point out even your death, like what happens in that case. And so like guys, we we weren't that was not in the plan. I'm just, so we have, you know, all those legalities in place. Um, but above all, I feel like I am, I at least my approach is a heavy commitment to relationship maintenance. Um, so then you you sort of have to to say, am I approaching this in good faith? Am I am I being honest entirely with with what the challenges are and what the outlook is? Um, one of the things that I'm learning very strongly is to underpromise. Uh, because I think the, only, the way I always run, I'm, I'm, I was a very optimistic guy. I, I know I've had my failures, but I know what my successes are. So, you know, you, when it's just you, you sort of put the target anyway, whether you fail or not, mm -hmm. you just beat yourself up, you don't go, but you know you did your best. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But now, of course, in a system like this, you have to be very careful about about that. Um, but I'll say, yeah, strong, strong leadership management uh, comes into play. Um, and just absolute honesty about the, the dealings. Yeah, and of course, the rule book that, that we follow and the board, yeah. 
how have your team changed along with you? Because you, you've you had, there's there's very many people that you were working with at the very beginning mm. who are still with you now. Mm. Um, and so how have their how have their engagements with, with the business changed? How mm. have their roles in the business changed yeah. now that um, you're kind of on this side of that process? Mm. I think my business now just has way more admin than it did before. Because <laughs> <laughs> before it was just a bunch of creatives running. Um, so that, that has been new. And of course, uh, teams are, are uh, sometimes a bit of put when they find new regulations that they didn't have to follow before. There's way more paperwork now all around. <laughs> I think for literally everything, there's paperwork, which was not the case before. Um, and I think a lot of people have taken it in stride. Uh, we've lost some because of it. Um, um, also there's... because, like you said, you're, you're building a new thing. You're building a new so thing. So if there are some people who are more aligned mm, with the old thing, mm. that, that, can, that can't have been easy. No, it's not. Um, and also it's not, sometimes it's not even just alignment. It's just that you find with all, with all these regulations, some people who are pretty much okay with who they were and stuff, but now maybe they just don't align with the rules that well. And as creatives tend tend not to. And then you have what the rules say, what should happen when people don't align by the rules. Mm. <laughs> um, so it's that, that has been an interesting uh, thing, thing to deal with. Um, and also just, uh, so there was an interesting period, you know, the pandemic, the change, all that, of course, affects teams in different ways. But I will say there's some who've taken it very, very well in stride. There are, there are some of my team members have actually stopped being uh, crew and become um, almost uh, C-suit kind, kind of guys in all these meetings and stuff. And for, for, those ones, for the ones that it's fun, it's fun. But I've also seen, surprisingly, I've also seen a few people who have been with me almost from the very beginning uh, really benefit entirely from it. So actually realize you are you are wasting their potential by not having those systems in place. Mm. Because now they've taken it and they're running. You know, the guys who just like really are not very well. Um, they, they're able to manage others be, uh, below them. They've, they're doing the reports fantastically. They, they're, because of it, they've become more creative because they're doing a bit more work behind. So it's very, it's, it's been a, a mixed, uh, mixed situation uh, on, on how different people have reacted differently to it. Yeah, but all, all of it very, very interesting. I think I think I think you said earlier was about communication and definitely it's true. I know even for us um, on the Hiva side, we're really we're really into people communicating, but mm. then that's not always a very easy yeah. thing to do. Yeah. And especially if you're the one who's been used to making your decisions and running yes, and yes. not having to explain mm. them to anybody mm. else. And you move or, fast that way. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Mm. So now how did you how did you learn to be a better communicator, especially yeah. with all of these outside parties? Mm. I think it's um it's it is continuous work. Um, so always like for myself now, uh, so, so first of all, you, you put systems in place to ensure that it happens a bit more. So like with my partner now, with, uh, with the investor is, uh, we meet every two weeks scheduled, at least at the beginning, I imagine it will get lesser than that as we go along. But at the beginning we are meeting every two weeks, just going through the, um, first there's several processes, there's business we're doing, but there's also like completion and, uh, and some of the post requirements. Uh, the good thing is also like I, I need a lot of mentorship from from them. So then there's a lot of hand holding, in, uh, especially on the new, uh, new stuff. So that, that that becomes very helpful. So it's easy when you're giving a, a report every two weeks. Um, then of course now you meet with the board quarterly. Um, with the team, internal communication for us has always been sort of okay because we have a system called Basecamp and we've always encouraged heavy. Um, Communication and everybody has access to everybody else, and there's you know we it's 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 much it's much easier. But then, with the with the external parties, it's it's an active effort every day, and sort of also creating systems to ensure you don't you don't miss on the reporting. Yeah. Um. There's 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 a thing there's a thing you've said about sorry I have to call the word. <laughs> Um, yes, yes, yes. You were, you were talking about mentorship. Mm. Um, and then, I mean, when I tie that together with the thoughts that you've had about you are running this thing and now you're yeah. running a completely different thing. Mm. How do you know what you need to know? Because it's all completely new yeah. for you. Every day is new. You weren't yeah. this Eugene before. Mm. So how do you how do you figure out what it is that you need to know and learn mm. completely afresh yeah. as you figure out how to run this new thing? That's a very interesting question. Um, I think for me personally, um, my, sh my, 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 my thinking about learning has um, took a different stride a few years ago when I started actively like seeking knowledge from books. Um, and the pandemic really helped because I spent a lot of time just reading. And I feel like that had already, because I read 
almost, well, now it's almost, but it used to be religiously every day for an hour and a half now, of course, because of all these things I'm doing, the reporting and whatnot. Sometimes you'll miss some days, but I'm still very, very diligent with that. And I feel like that already had um, crafted my mind in a sense to be aware of my ignorance. Because you know, that's the beauty of, of when you're learning from books. It's like, wait, okay, I did not know that at all. I did not even know that I, I could know that. Uh, so I think that already helps helps me even now. And I go, um, I approach mentorship with a very open mind. Like I'm very, you, you have to come with a lot of humility when you're looking to learn. Um, uh, and also of course, um, self-honesty. Um, so I feel like those, those those things have really helped me. And the fact that also the learnings, the learnings I'm receiving now are both kind and very practical. When you have a great board and you know, these are people who've, um, Who've, who know what they're talking about, they have decades of experience uh, in their fields. It's, it's, you'd have to have blocked your mind very much to block that kind of learning and knowledge. And of course, it's, it, it's to the detriment of your business. Um, so for me, so there's the board as also, and also people we've installed in the business who are now uh, to head some of those administrative roles that I was talking about. So there's also learning from those guys. Uh, this is someone who's been in finance for decades. So of course, there's, they know things much, much differently than you do, HR specialists and all that. Um, it's, I think I'm just aware of how little I know. So then that helps because mm. <laughs> I'm approaching everything. I don't approach anything with, with, the, with the notion that I know. Yeah. Um, I think then maybe one of the last questions I'll ask you is when you when you then think about having to now take into account all these other external voices because your business used to run on you. Mm. It it was just you and maybe like a, a couple of core members yeah. of your team. Yeah. But then now there's all this kind of oversight mm. um, and there's all this expertise in all these other departments that your yeah. business has kind of yeah. expanded into. Mm. How do you how do you have a balance between that and also trusting yourself and your instincts yeah. around um, where the business is going and what you want to be able to yeah. do with it? Yeah. Yeah. Now that's something I'm still struggling with. Mm. Um, there, um, there, there are many days I, I sit there and go like, but this is more complicated than it should be. Mm. Or or maybe is it me who's who's also simplifying it more than it should be? Um, so there's a, that, that is something I'm still struggling with, uh, trying to figure out that self-confidence uh, on, around it. But I can, um, there are things that I do stand my ground on. Um, because not sometimes because I know the outcome, but just uh, the importance of that gut feeling that got me here to start with. Can you give an example? Um, a lot of it is creative. Uh, so like there's one project I can really, I really can't uh, go much into it, but where everybody thought this is the direction we should go, but um, I'm thinking, no, this is more the direction I think we should go. Um, and the good thing is I don't, I don't think it has gotten to an escalation where like a vote needs to be taken or anything of that sort. What I usually just go back and do is I take the questions and I go farm up my my um, what my proposal was. Because like the questions are coming from a legitimate place. They're coming from a legitimate place. Okay. And in most in all those cases, I found that taking in so first first of all, the thing I've learned is not to change your idea because of questions or because of, of doubts on sections, hmm. um, especially if the idea is solid. No, because if, if you do that with, with all those voices, there's never an idea that will stand the the, uh, the test of time. Absolutely. Uh, so then what, what you do is you go, I take the questions, I go back and um, sort of do more work into them. Uh, I always say like, I'll be back next week with a, with, with a proper explanation on things. And what, what that process does is it either makes you see proper gaping holes or you find a good reason to stand your ground. Mm. Um, in either way, uh, uh, people win, but I also do yield a lot um, on, on on a lot of decisions. It's it's an ongoing it's an ongoing thing, and just constantly finding balance. It's constantly finding balance, yeah. But that's a, that's a that's a real struggle. That's it's, really beautiful about yeah. not letting questions threaten mm. the core of the thing yeah. that you're trying to do. Yeah, that the questions can actually make it stronger, even mm. if they seem like they're yeah. disagreeing. Yeah. Okay. Because more often, I've like there's a, there's a quote I have. Um, if I find my phone, I can read it to you. It's, that I really, I really uh, live by, and it's it's basically along the lines of I I, I trust uh, my ideas and I have full faith in my ability and willingness to execute them, mm. uh, because a lot of uh, being in the field that I am, I found that if you do not trust your your things, then they just never happen. Mm. Um, and now, listen, like when someone comes and says, "What is that idea?" Can be, I said, "It can be," but that's not my idea. <laughs> 
like I still want to stand by what I want to do, and then someone else can do that other thing. Okay. Um, so I, it's that's that ability to just stand by some of those things. I think is, is important sometimes. Okay. Mm. I think maybe my last question yeah. for you is going to be um, what what is exciting you about going forward, especially yeah. in this kind of new dispensation yeah. of um, of of the work that you're doing and mm. the ways in which you're doing mm. it, especially mm. having received um, this external financing. Yeah. Um, oh man, I'm, I'm very excited about a lot of stuff. It's um, first... Ooh, and what's exciting your board also because oh. now you have to you have to factor <laughs> them in. You go together like a family. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what, what is exciting at the moment, of course, is is we are changing um, our commercialization model. Uh, we are trying to figure out. So yes, we have this great content that we make, uh, but the existing. Um, Financial models, uh, as we what we were talking about earlier, um, are good, but we'd like to see what else we can do to them. And so we'll be we're looking at putting money in products. We're looking at, um, at 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 going to bigger partnerships, the artists we work with, um, and and other businesses as well. Uh, we and that's interesting because then it's like you've start you've you have your own equity arrangements, mm. and then now you're going to have other equity other arrangements equity with arrangements. other people. Yeah. So it's yeah. like equities. Giving birth to more equity. Yes, That's yes, it's 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 amazing. Yeah. Um, then of course we're very interested in in getting into neighboring countries. So we had a run in Tanzania, just trying to meet the artists, different artists there, and we met with almost all the top ones. Um, and we're trying to see if we can do some TV shows there, um, and also just not just do TV shows, but merge our uh, amalgamate our audiences, both Kenya and, and Tanzania. So you're reaching a bigger. Um, a bigger number, so that that's very exciting. And of course, if if we're able to do that, uh, that'll take off. We we also in keen to getting into the music business, which was supposed to happen this year, but uh, again, our good old friend, the the pandemic, <laughs> so that's delaying some things. But we're we're looking at 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 at, at first of all figuring out a new, uh, uh, better commercial models for the shows that we have existing, and then getting into not just television but the music, uh, but entertainment, all around. Um, and and here we also. Um, We've we've done almost all the formats we've done so far have been docu reality, but we are now keen to get into scripted TV. Uh, we've just done our first project, which we hope will be on air sometime soon. Um, so yeah, it's it's just an exciting time around. I think the board is excited about the same things, um, but then also just presently we're also just trying to stabilize from uh, from all the shocks of, of of the pandemic and then uh, keep the momentum going. Eugene, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this story. I still don't understand how you get seven hours of sleep at night when you're doing all of these things, um, which I think it's also a testament to the strength of your team and how yeah. much trust you have to have mm, in mm. a bunch of other people. Yeah. But thank you so much for telling us about um, the ways in which um, having all this external oversight has forced you mm, to change, mm. sometimes in ways that you didn't necessarily yeah, like, but yeah. um, you found a way to make it work for yes, you. Yes. Um, and, and, and your journey is incredible, and we wish you all, all, all the best. Thank you very much. Asante, Sana. Thank you, Jackie. Have a wonderful day. Asante, you as well. <laughs>